We're good. Okay. Uh, welcome to the August 20th, 2019, Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee. My name is Kelly Robinson. I serve as chairman of this committee. Uh, this, uh, this committee is live. Uh, it is a videotape for our citizens for future review, um, open record, or any type of open archive moment that they would like to see. That being said, we're going to go around the room for those who are at the table and we do an introduction. We'll start with our county administrator and we'll give last rights to our chair. So, county administrator. County administrator Mark Teal. Jessica Therio, assistant to Mark Teal. Miguel Valentin, transportation director. Jamal Shepard, transit coordinator. Gary Watson, Connect Douglas Transit Services Director. Jerry Presley with Creative Outdoor. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners. Welcome you all. Okay. Miguel Valentin, let's go on you as our Director of Transportation here facilitate uh, this meeting. Yes, sir. Let's start off with our administrative part first. Yes, uh, the first item would be the approval of the minutes of the July 23rd, 2019 meeting. Okay. I've read them. Has everybody else read them? Yes, sir. All right. Is there any edits or amendments to them? So can I get a motion to adopt the meetings as presented? Certainly. Sure. Got a motion and a second. Any discussions? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Minutes are adopted as presented. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda would be uh, reports from transit yeah. services. And um, I'll, I'll pass the baton over to Gary. Uh, first item um, on the docket would be the public engagement, uh, a brief update from the collaborative firm. Yes, sir. We do have updates from the collaborative firm. We have uh, Danielle Crow here and Dr. Uh, Deborah Johnson Blake uh, for the updates. Ladies, I'll turn it over to them. Good afternoon. Thank you all for the opportunity to share a brief update on today. Um, the managing partner for the collaborative firm, Michael Hightower, is en route. Uh, I'm not certain uh, with the um, traffic when he will arrive, but for the sake of time, I will introduce or reintroduce um, Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake, uh, whom I affectionately refer to as Dr. DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, and she will lead uh, part of the uh, review in terms of what is upcoming for the 90-day assessment. And then thereafter, I'll come back up, back up and share some brief information. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Briefly, I just want to talk about the 90-day assessment review strategy that we discussed at a meeting last week. And the goal is to deploy the onboard survey starting the week of August 26th through August 29th with the goal of riding each um, bus three, at least three times a day, morning, midday, afternoon, so that we can get a good, hopefully, perception of all of those riders who can provide some data that's going to assist us. And then once that is done, we will work with Mr. Watson to compile a report that's going to include both quantitative and qualitative data, as well as financials throughout this project. And we hope to have all of the surveys completed and finalized um, before the September meeting. And we'll, we'll, we will provide a detailed report on that. And that concludes my brief overview. Mm -hmm. no, Any questions? That's fine. And, and we'll, we'll take a few questions for this because this is, again, this is just a checkpoint for more formal. Okay. Um, Gary, um, the more formal um, presentation is next month. Um, we have at least 90 days worth of data aggregation, is that true? Well, today is actually our second month anniversary. Right, so, so 60 we'll days. Month 60 60 days, days. That's correct, right. yes, sir. Right. Okay. Thank um, you. Um, as it relates to this, one more time, well, that's the survey. Um, this survey, that we're, is there like a, a sample number that we're trying to get to to make it um, relevant? Or? Talk to me about. Don't I don't have a specific specific number in mind. Um, our our goal would be just to talk to as many riders as we can. Yeah. So while they're there. Yes. And just collect it and so on. Right. All right. I mean, so the point is, anybody and everybody gets on there recognizing this self-selection. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Well, 
hopefully everybody will, will be cooperative and want to talk to us about it. We're not going to force anyone to give, right. give their opinion. Okay. Um, to this point, um, are we getting any, all right, so that's the formal survey, how are we doing? Um, very structured questions to, to gain uh, uniformity in answers and all of that and form a conclusion. What about those, uh, those actual um, experience, the, the experience feedback where it's in the moment? In other words, the bus was late, right? The feedback that you get through your 800 number um, or through um, just the Transportation Service Center. How will you, how will you, so if I think about all the different sources of information, all the sources of feedback, all the sources of how well we're doing, how are you, how are you going to frame that, right? Well, I want to hear how they're experiencing it on the buses, the going around and around. I also want to know how people interact with the system beyond just the bus. How do they engage us? How, how will y'all, what's your approach to that? How, how, do, how do we get feedback? How are you going to report back on in 90 days? I, let's just say, I'd like to know what that looks like, right? Um, you've got a survey, and you're going to give me a, quant, a, a quantitative, but I also want to hear the qualitative part. What is it telling us? I mean, is that going to all be in this 90 yeah, day now? Yes, sir. And, and, and we're keeping a log of all okay. comments. You are uh, capturing about it. Okay. that service, yes, sir. Whether, whether it's comments, suggestions, compliments, complaints, whatever, uh, people wanting uh, the routes to be extended, times changed, all of that information we're, we're gathering and putting in a, in a database, which will be part of the report that we submit to the commissioners. You know, when I was younger, one of my first jobs was a customer service rep. Huh? Thank you for calling Prudential Bank. How can I help you? <coughs> I designed a tick sheet. So this is my very first corporate experience was capturing phone calls that came in and the different experiences people have through the banking system and also those that are not part of your tick. It's just capturing the raw data. It, it was I learned that how valuable that was for the decision makers at that time to be able to respond. So I just was encouraging you guys to try to make sure we capture that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you capped it, you know. For example, if I get a, if I look at my voicemail right now and I got a bunch of calls, people say stuff, um, it may not make Sherry's list of things to do, per se, right? But, but the things I'm supposed to respond to, they do. Are y'all capturing that formally or do you just respond back? I mean, how are you? Well, the database that we're compiling, it, it, it includes the, the complaints, comments, or whatever, and, and we respond to those to, to work to the point that we have a resolution of that, and then we're keeping that as part of the database. Okay. So there's a resolution now. I'll leave it with this, and please weigh in with my fellow committee members, which is, think about a dashboard, right? Associate satisfaction, customer satisfaction, right? I mean, you know, employee, you know, all around the board, financials. And I'm curious as to, um, and I'm not suggesting it go anywhere, but I'm just sort of, I'm wanting to hear that we're really committed to customer service here. It's just not sort of a one-off, okay, just, Thank you. I mean, are we? Can you weigh in? Mm -hmm. oh, that was a segue. You know, I'm sitting at uh, that, uh, Go ahead, please. I well, you mentioned, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chairman, of the uh, Transportation Committee. Um, when you mentioned dashboards, I think it's very important for us to make a visual because that's part of it. And of course, you do have some dashboards that have some color coded messages, such as the green, yellow, and red. And it allows us, and red does not necessarily mean bad in 90 days. It just means that we have an area of opportunity for improvement. And if we had something in our system, I'm not sure what our existing, how are you uh, gather, gathering, gathering all your data, then I'm not sure what tool you're using to input the da data. So if you had something that would give you a little idea, and it probably changes exciting if you see it change to some nice colors. And yellow's, yellow also means that we just haven't, haven't really addressed it yet, but it's on our radar. So, so if you just measure that way, but it's <coughs> just measuring those outcomes and then just allowing us to pivot and, and change. So it's, it's natural for not to be perfect initially. How does that sound? Okay. Now you're back to you. Okay. All right, Miguel, any thoughts? Or this yeah, just, just a question for, for the team. The onboarding survey, are you, are you going to try to capture um, where they, what that option means to the rider. In other words, are they um, just a casual rider that could have other means? Are they, is this the only means of them getting to where they're going? 
Right. We hope to capture why they're riding the bus, how often they ride the bus. Um, I also like to consider who else in the household rides the bus, but we want to see whether or not they have their, this could be temporary, or is it the use of their own transportation? So we have uh, questions that we're considering and going to compile them uh, once Mr. Watson and I meet again and then kind of drill down those particular questions that we want to include on a short survey because we want it to be short. You know, the ride is short, so I'm trying to capture the data quickly as possible and hopefully that they will be amenable to that. All right, so, 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 so stay with me. And so this is our first time today so we're just getting used to the system, but we haven't really surveyed them so far. So then, so what I'm hearing you say, once you initiate this survey, I'm, I'm thinking October, November, December, what, it's a 90-day window of, of evaluation? And explain the time frame for me. Well. Or just pray it, I'm not looking at it. Well, but what are you thinking? Well, so, September the 20th would be our 90-day our 90 90 day anniversary. Yes. Um, I don't know the exact date of the next transportation committee meeting, but but we will have the report ready uh, for this committee at their September meeting. September 17th. Okay. We'll have a report for the committee uh, at that at that date, and then once this committee has has reviewed the report, it, report if if it be your choice, your desire, we'll submit it to the full board of commissioners uh, for their their review. But the the report that uh, we're going to put together is going to be all-encompassing. Uh, as, as she has said, the onboard survey is a crucial part of this, this survey, but we're, we're going to do interviews with other key people. She's, she's going to interview uh, the staff of transitions to get their thoughts on how things are going. She's going to interview our staff. To, to, to get our idea of what things are going, and then, then some other key people in the community to, uh, to, to, to gauge how they, they think the service is, is working. And then hopefully we can develop some themes on for, con for continuous improvement. Yeah, yes. I was mentioned that. Absolutely. Back to uh, action on those outliers that you have uh, conducted root cause analysis and then they put on um, just a continuous uh, quality improvement plan so we can uh, sustain. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. This, all right. So let's just keep this moving. Keep keep meeting tight. So as a as a framework, um, you mentioned Mark. You said September seventeenth. That's right. our next one. Um, let's just say be prepared to present to the um, this committee on September second, September seventeenth, and perhaps um, and I think the board commissioners should respectfully get a full ninety day assessment on um, the next meeting in um, October that first meeting. We get, you know, we get them their briefing. So committee first um, on September 17th, and then two weeks later to the full board of commissioners, which gives them a whole 90 days. You can clean up reports, whatever you need. Uh, if I may, uh, Gary, you, you mentioned uh, having a report ready for, for the September meeting, but if you're going to be doing the onboard survey for a week or two, is that going to give you sufficient time to compile it? And have it ready for the September meeting. Yes. 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 Are we utilizing a special system which allows you to enter your metrics and to formulate the, the actual report? Is there special software you're using, or are you just basically using a basic Excel spreadsheet? In the Excel spreadsheet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. DJ, what are you? One of the things that I recommend is in vivo. Um, that is good for measuring qualitative data. Mm -hmm. um, so we might consider that can have a conversation about that. Um, using the software, of course, is additional funding uh, costs. I don't have access to it right now. I did several years ago, but I don't have access to it right now. But I was considering that, and I was going to discuss that offline. Okay. So make a note on an ongoing, we'll make a note to explore ongoing um, um, survey capacity for a minute. But now I'm going to come back and just, just segue into, okay, this is customer interaction. What do you think? The, the quantitative data is, and this is going to go back to two years worth of, okay, so where's our reporting? 
recognize, and I know y'all smile with reports, but part of this, this presentation is not, I mean, we need a full picture. It doesn't need to be piecemeal. We, need, we have to get, okay, what are the service, what are the citizens saying about their experience, right? What is our operation saying to us? That is not an additional cost. You know, we, it's my understanding that um, yeah, reporting was a, a, a requirement. It was a functional and a technical <coughs> requirement. We will get reports. So all of this should be we by the time. I'm okay here at the, at, the, at the committee level, but the board of commissioners as a whole should get a whole picture, right? And all these elements of, of touching the customer should come into one seamless, one single view. Uh, remember, that's all I said, give me a single view of the program. So now here we are, we, we, we avoided it, we couldn't do it, we didn't have the capacity, we didn't have the talent, well here we are. And so now we, we, that, that, that must be delivered. Um, so the Board of Commissioners hasn't asked for much, but one thing that, that I've always advocated for them was a single view of the program, right? So for that, for that meeting, so county administrator, going into that first meeting in October, we need to have a single view. And how they get there, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open with, I mean, we've got a, a, a third party operator was supposed to be able to provide us some degree of reporting with some degree, they've got experience. Well, how have they presented information to full enough governments, right? So I'm, I'm sure you can leverage some experience sets, but I, uh, we, we just want a clean look, um, and we want to show that um, the reason that we didn't do this internally when we went to Cherokee was like, okay, oh wow, that's a lot of heavy lifting we've gotten. Gary, I think you remember the, 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 the deputy director had to drive the bus. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at that, and you were, and you were out doing work, and it's like, and he's got to drive the bus. And I'm like, oh no. And I'm like, big guy's way smarter, in my opinion, than, than you know, y'all can do it better than them. But I think that was something I wasn't the business that we're in. And so we purpose unanimously go third party. So third party should be de better able to do than we do, if that makes sense we're paying for it. So you got any objections to just the expectation, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. I think the expectation is solid. Okay. All right. Miguel, please wait. You, you okay? No, I'm, I'm fine with that. Mark? Yep, I'm fine. Okay. Yep. Same with you. Mm -hmm. But a full board of commissioners, we can work through it in our committee. We can sort of reshape it then. But, okay. Here. All right. Anything else? Well, I think we have one more. Yeah, on the video. Oh. Yes, sir. Um, I think Danielle earlier mentioned that uh, we had some other presentations. One of the things that we worked with Gary on last week, we met uh, Danielle and Dr. DJ and I met with uh, Gary, and uh, and, you know, and that's a, a different document. Uh, this is about the uh, uh, the, uh, the the proposed video that Gary and Danielle and Dr. Baker and I have been talking about. And basically, uh, uh, essentially, you know, if you go to page two. There are about five or six items on in this document that kind of outline um, the kind of outline the, the 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 critical elements of the uh, of the video. Obviously, uh, uh, this past uh, Saturday morning, I was uh, glad to be at uh, Commissioner Robinson's uh, boot camp meeting this past. Uh, great turnout, Commissioner Robinson. And uh, some, uh, the only feedback we got there, uh, Gary, was a lady asked about uh, in addition to the bus stops about benches. So. Basically, there was a, it was a very, they were very appreciative of what the county was doing. Uh, well, we they said, can we have benches? I said, well, we'll discuss it. That was the only thing that was mentioned that uh, we met, I mean, we met out to us. So that was only, they were happy with, with the county's process and they asked about benches. So I said, yeah, we'll put that into the evaluation. But the, but the video is Commissioner Robinson and Gary have outlined earlier. And I think Daniela has some early comments. Will allow uh, just some basic educational components for citizens on schedule, stop. Obviously, uh, uh, Marcus, you know, you, did, you guys did a great job in getting those stops out early on. Are they in the right location? So, but, but I think now with this video, we'll say what the stops are. And also, as Gary mentioned in the video, uh, Gary, you mentioned on Friday with, when we met about uh, informing the public that there may be some other in, informal stops as the need arises. Uh, exact change has been a question. Uh, riders will be encouraged to have exact change when boarding. Uh, we'll also encourage them to, of course, look at the ticket uh, purchase process. And uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, Dr. DJ and, and, uh, and, uh, and Danielle, we've talked about, of course, a smartphone app uh, to track the network that way. And also to uh, allow for some feedback, as you mentioned, uh, Madam Chair, on the customer service experience. So these are some of the things that the video will talk about. And uh, we will continue to work with Gary as we grind this out uh, the next uh, uh, few weeks. But this is the this is this is the video that uh, 
Gary and, and Commissioner Robertson and I uh, we, have, we have talked about. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, get them to Gary. We're, we're working with Gary to, to press those out. Um, Madam Chair, th this was um, actually a little more that was in did you have frame and express the need to do so? Any thoughts on what you need? Yeah, I just had one comment of, you know, I just mentioned that the schedules were really not easy for the lay people or someone who has not written or utilized the bus system before. When you look at the schedules, and just, it just, everything seems to just be so compact. The numbers are just running together. I had my daughter who's a teacher of, uh, she's a high school teacher and uh, those are masters, and we both were looking at it, and it, it, it's very convoluted. I was just trying to see if we could make it more seamless and open it up like that. Okay. For those, someone who's never, and, and of course I didn't hold, hold her accountable because she's never uh, had to be exposed to a uh, transit system in her life, but of course she was like, it's still like, it's just, it doesn't make sense. So, it, can you explain a little bit who created this? Well, it, it was a joint effort with our staff and, and the collaborative firm in particular, Danielle. I, I, I will say our, the way our schedule is set is, is pretty much based on the same formula that most other transit agencies use for, for their schedules. It's, it's not an easy document to read. Thank you. I feel in, better. In <laughs> but, but the, but the, the video that, that we're planning, the, the heavy emphasis of it is going to be on the schedule and how to read it yeah. and how to use it. And, thank you. That, and that was based on my request to see what we do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Senator sure Daniel wants to ask, do you mind? Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. If I may, if I may um, thank you. And I know that Michael was leading this. Um, I don't know exactly what's included in the written report, but part of, after I received the directive, because I was not present here during the July Transportation Committee meeting, uh, one of the first stops, anything I do is driven by research. And that was consulting with Gary, our transportation planner, as well as our third party operators at Transit Solutions, because they're um, fielding most of those calls. So it's important for us to know what are some of the questions? What are those frequently asked questions? I also did a best practice analysis on other systems. Um, to Gary's credit and for all of this uh, implementation, uh, we have done the best with the resources that we had within the parameters that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and having said that, the schedule, uh, because I look at it from the standpoint of someone who grew up in a rural community, I didn't ride a bus until I was in graduate school, uh, as well as someone who doesn't know Douglas County. So if you're not familiar with those landmarks, how do you look at this document? Mm -hmm. And so I've made several recommendations um, and it's not so much the schedule, uh, because that is a byproduct from the Paseo Go system. That's what's generated um, once the narrative is placed in there. But it's the map. We started out with the map that um, we collaborated with the GIS department for, and we're very thankful for them. But that was primarily to be used when we were looking at route review. Mm -hmm. We knew that once the third party vendor came on, that we would get a uh, more customer friendly, user friendly map generated from that system. Unfortunately, that did not happen before the schedules went to print. So one of the things that we proposed, and I thank Gary for always being very supportive and keeping the ball moving, is that one, we have the option of doing the short instructional video that will help people from where they are with the current map. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've also requested from the third party uh, vendor to see how long would it take them to generate the map from the current system. Mm -hmm. Because what I saw in terms of what was different uh, is that some of the connection points, although listed on the schedule, are not on the map. But that's because the map was created before you had the schedule points. So it's about looking at it from multiple perspectives and seeing not only how do we get this deliverable out to, to push it out, but how do we really address the true problem. Uh, and I wanted to look at it not only as someone who may not be technically savvy, but also people who are visiting Douglas County. So that way we can do it the next time and move forward. Um, that's one thing. I think the last thing that I'll share in relation to that is that with this ad here, this current ad, so there are lots of nuggets of information, and it's so important for us to put it in places that will live beyond uh, Gary's staff, because they're a very dedicated team, but they can only answer so many calls and so many emails. 
Uh, one of the most helpful things that you need before you can even determine which schedule to pull is to know which one serves the destination that you're trying to go to. So we're mindful of that when we're um, developing our collateral materials, our advertising. We're giving people the information that they need in manners where they already are and in chunks that they can digest them. That's the other reason for trying to keep the scheduling uh, video very short. If it's truly in the, an instructional, we have to do it in people's attention span and let them have the opportunity to retain that information. Lastly, I'll say we can look into options or, uh, and forgive me, Michael, this, this is not a collaborative firm. I'm not speaking, <laughs> this, is, this is not a vetted um, option, but there are many options like Google Transit, which is trusted by our partners like the ATL and the, the state uh, road and tollway system that would allow us to upload our narratives, uh, our route narratives, and people can then have all that information at their fingertips, and it's free of charge. Um, I think especially since we're seeing so much success on Route 40, where people, where there is approximately <coughs> 10 transfers per day, I mean, so that's like 60 in a week. Mm -hmm that we would promote the connectivity that you all stated at the beginning of this initiative uh, throughout the region. So we see that you were uh, definitely on target with that, and that would really facilitate that because people who don't even start in Douglas but start in Cobb would have greater access to that information. So that, I think, uh, is where we are with We can incorporate that into this process. Okay. And I think to your point, to Daniel's point, Dr. DJ's, one of the points in the uh, Review is to look at that mm -hmm. so We were across the same for that. So we have we have a good check and balance. That's the beauty. She's been on the ground, she lives here. Mm -hmm. So we have the we have the best. People just think I live here. It's a good it's a good balance. It really is. It's a great balance. It really is. And yeah. so having said that, um, mm -hmm. it is a good balance and it also is a seasonal transition. And so if I may, I just want to quickly say thank you. Um, I wanted to say thank you for having the opportunity to lead the most comprehensive rebranding and rigorous public involvement campaign for a transit system in this 13 county region. Um, the Transportation Committee, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, uh, Mr. Gary Watson and his fabulous team at Connect Douglas, and more importantly, the citizens of Douglas County can all take pride in successfully launching um, a transit, a fixed route system, the first of its kind in the past 15 years. I mean, to have Chris Tomlinson, the interim director of the ATL and executive director of the State uh, uh, Roadway and Toll Association, personally commend us on the rebranding, specifically on the logo design and the bus wrap, is quite an accomplishment. To have Vice Chairman Robinson uh, state about our Connect Douglas Lunch and Learn series that it was, it set the standard for how all community engagement in the county should be done is a feather in my cap. And to have Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones uh, state that we were the team to get it done is definitely an accomplishment. You know, more than a year ago, you personally asked me to stay and to see this effort through the launch, and it was my honor to do so. So I thank you all for this opportunity, and I thank the citizens of Douglas County who all uh, offered their input to make this what it is today. Thank you, and thank you, Michael. Guys, I, we, we, I mean, while she was going around acknowledging everybody, uh, Michael, I can't reply when you guys are, are staunch partners. I think Danielle deserves a hand, guys, for what she's done. For I agree. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. That's a copy of the other of the white of the Okay. So real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna keep us moving. Um, as it relates to the video, uh, I'm gonna go back to um, I'm gonna go back to the schedule, which now chairs point. That, that's what this was about. Um, Jamal, you had mentioned technology was something that was important to a third party operator has technology in the buses, you can find where the bus is. So it's, um, I want to I want to encourage the leverage of technology some kind of way because I, again, my, my mother knows how to use Uber now mm -hmm. and knows how to use MapQuest. Right? So is there some kind of way of technology you can put in where you at and where you're trying to go? 
I mean, you, so there's the schedule to, my, to Madam Chair's point, make it more readable, make it more framed better for how to, how to navigate Douglas County. Um, uh, uh, because without um, online technology, if I put my son out on Thornton Road, he couldn't get to Camp Creek without the phone. But there are some of us who know North, Block, West, South, East, and so forth. So the question is, if you're not leveraging technology, you better get the map right. You got to do it in a user-friendly fashion. Um, if you choose not to use that, you got to get this right. And probably the best one is going to be both. Yes, sir. All right. So can we work toward that? Um, let's. Again, we know this was a baseline. I'm sure you know how it is. This was our baseline. Thanks. Great job. All right. So we're out the gate. This is not critical. This is constructive. Said, okay, now where do we go from here? So we know we got some room to improve some things. Um, we, but we need to. Let's not just react to the next 1.1. Let's look at a 2.0 and say, okay, what should it be, right? Because when we come back out, that schedule's got to be on point. It's got to work. Uh, to Madam Chair's point, I mean, without the schedule, without me being able to know where I'm going, none of this else matters, guys. If you don't get the schedule right and make it user, all this is nice to have. The video is nice. I mean, all this, look at how, look how pretty our bench are, look how pretty our bust out. But that schedule, if it doesn't get me where I need to go, nothing else matters. That sheet of paper that we put that schedule on is that important. Does that make sense? No. Yes. Yes, sir, it does. Okay. I just want to make sure because you well, want to play. I would just say this. In in the two months that we've been operating the bus service, we have learned so much. Mm -hmm. yes. um, we we see things that we should have done a little differently. We see things that we've done well. We also, as Danielle pointed out, we see a lot of things that we need to do moving forward and, and we've got our list of, of, of things to improve the, the efficiency of the system uh, to improve the, the user friendliness of the system as well so between as much as we've done in these first two months between now and the end of the year you're going to see so much more that we're doing very good. I want to personally you have moved a 15 year mountain this, that's huge. So we expect to have some, some ripples effects. But what you did do, you cast a stone and you caused a ripple that has not been done in this state in 15 years. So I'm excited. Uh, the bunch chairman is excited about what y'all are doing. So please, this constructive just advice yes. is just to allow us to sure. go from good to great. Mr. Collins, that was, in our, uh, that was mentioned in our uh, luncheon today. So we just want to go from good to great. That's all. And we always, and my favorite, uh, you know, my little cliche, I always go with it. I won't use a best that. We just, we're just chasing perfection to achieve excellence. That's yeah, all. Sure. You chase it. We can't catch it, but we're just chasing it. So that's it. Y'all doing a good job. Thank you. Right. We appreciate it. So, all right, so I just want to clarify the meeting minutes that um, um, our next Transportation Committee meeting in the board meeting, the following board commission meeting is just for the survey. When do we anticipate first look at this video? A month to six weeks, perhaps? Yes, I we think of uh, uh, 30 days. I think thinking have an update report as soon as next, uh, the 17th, and working with uh, Rick in communication. Right. So we'll push that out into the second meeting in October. All right. It's the goal, it's pushing out. So this our, our, our committee meeting in October. So. How about that? The the same same present in our yeah, that's right. All right. That's good. All right. So we get that just uh, yes, to sir. clarify. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, on that part, let's move forward. I think we have advertised the next item. Miguel, yes, yes, up next. The next item related to uh, the fixed bus sprout is uh, a presentation uh, regarding uh, benches. Benches. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hightower mentioned just a few minutes ago that. Uh, during the, the HOA boot camp Saturday morning that some of the people there uh, asked about benches yes. uh, at the bus stops. Well, we've got the gentleman here today to, to talk to us about that. This is Jerry Presley from Creative Outdoor okay. who's going to, uh, to talk about uh, bus stop amenities. Jerry, Jerry, welcome. Please take a photo. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And it, let me just say it's really exciting. Uh, to be here working uh, with the Douglas uh, County on this uh, potential partnership. 
uh, in part because uh, you guys have, are doing some transformative things for your community and uh, we're excited for you uh, and we're excited to be a part of the, uh, building a better future for your transit options here uh, as we move forward. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a brief overview, a little bit about who we are as a company, uh, then share a little bit of information about our public-private partnership opportunity and how it works, uh, and then of course show you a little bit about the infrastructure that we're recommending uh, to help support your transit network, um, and then offer you an opportunity to ask some additional questions uh, that you may have. Oops. <clears throat> so just to give you some background and history on who we are as a company, we were founded in 1984 as a street furniture advertising company. We are the largest firm currently in the industry. Uh, we currently work with over 300 local municipal and transit partners throughout North America. Uh, we have roughly 18,000 units and growing um, in place uh, today that includes a wide variety of different products, not just benches, but uh, uh, recycling uh, products, trash cans, um, uh, bike racks, just a multitude of different things that help to support a pedestrian and or transit network for your community. Uh, we are the industry leader in both sales and technology application. And we'll get into a little bit about the technology and how we utilize that. Uh, technology is something that's important to all of us and we're making our lives a little bit easier and helping to generate the data that we need to justify and, and support public programs. In addition, we work with over 10,000 uh, local business uh, partners that help to fund our programs throughout North America. Uh, our company is dedicated to helping local communities like yours secure, secure the street furniture that's needed to fully support the pedestrian networks, thereby enhancing user experiences and improving the quality of life for all of your citizens. As a uh, company, our philosophy is, is that all the street furniture that we put in place should blend in with the local streetscape. Uh, it needs to be something that is well maintained and contributes to the overall quality of life of the community. Uh, any of the advertising that's placed needs to uphold that local community's values, and that's something that we'll talk about as well, uh, not just in the content itself, but also in the appearance and the way that it looks. Uh, we believe that any, any sort of advertising that's out there on our product needs to look good all the time because it reflects on the community in which it's uh, placed. Uh, as a company, we are engaging in constant research and development to ensure that our municipal clients have the, uh, the latest and greatest street furniture and the technology available to it. And we also look to be a good community partner, and that means giving back. Uh, we do this through a couple of different ways. We want to promote uh, local PSA opportunities to help support the lo local nonprofit community, to help to support the local transit system, uh, and also to create revenue opportunity uh, for not only ourselves, uh, but also for the city or the county and our municipal partners and our local nonprofits in the community. Uh, and of course, we always uh, seek to local hire local resources in which to uh, build our system upon and to maintain our system. So we're going to talk about the overview um, and let's go ahead and get on in because I know you guys are, are uh, kind of short on time and want to move forward. But uh, uh, this program is absolutely 100% cost free for our municipal partners. It does not cost you absolutely anything. Uh, this includes any of the equipment that we install. Um, it includes any installation costs, hiring the contractors, any maintenance and service that's related from once it's uh, put into place going forward. And it also includes any insurance and for any legal liabilities that are associated with our products being out on the street. Uh, the program is actually paid for by uh, leasing commercial advertising space to local businesses in the community. Uh, okay. Almost all of our, our business clients are local businesses, small businesses within the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's something that we are very proud about doing when we come into a community. We want to make sure that we're actually working with local businesses in that community. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also offer the Net Advertising Revenue uh, Share Program, uh, which averages on a, an average of about 12%. We want to make this a true win-win scenario, not only for uh, the, the municipal uh, partners, uh, the cities, the county governments, the taxpayers, uh, the nonprofits and local businesses in the community. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the revenue sharing program. Uh, our, our local partners, our municipal partners, can earn an average of 12% of the total net advertising revenues that are generated from a program. This does vary sometimes depending on uh, the number of, ultimately, the number of units that are installed, uh, the responsibility for uh, uh, any uh, waste or, or, or removal of recycling materials. Um, the share increases uh, if, the, if the local government, local partner performs it. It decreases uh, if uh, uh, the company uh, or if we perform it ourselves. Um, and of course, it, it varies. Some local communities don't want the uh, 
revenue partners, or excuse me, the municipal partners don't want to receive the revenues directly. They refer to it to support local nonprofits in the community. And so we do work with you in that re uh, regard as well. Um, the local benefits to the, to the uh, local uh, municipal partners, uh, this is really designed to be a true public-private partnership uh, that generates uh, significant annual savings to our local taxpayers. Uh, if, if it's not creating a savings for the community, what kind of partnership is it? Uh, you need to get something in return, and so this is a, a big asset uh, because we do provide all the infrastructure in place uh, and, and, and so that it's not a burden uh, to the local taxpayers, and you can use your resources to help fund other projects in your community. Uh, it is also designed to help promote local commerce, increasing uh, tax revenues. If your local businesses are able to promote their products and services locally, then uh, it helps to generate and capture uh, local revenue dollars uh, within the community. Again, we also provide uh, public service announcements. A lot of times municipal governments need to get the word out about programs and services, and this is a great venue in which to do it. Uh, and of course, we, can, we also offer those same opportunities to local nonprofits in the community. Local businesses in the community, uh, this provides them an excellent uh, advertising revenue, uh, or ven I'm sorry, venue. Um, it's very, very affordable as opposed to more traditional, more expensive methods such as uh, uh, newspaper ads, radio ads, television ads, or big, big billboard uh, advertising, or even online advertising. Um, this is a static message that's in the community, uh, and it can help to, to create more opportunity for them to capture that local audience. Uh, as people come to visit, um, but as well as people who live here in the community can learn about products and services that are available to them locally. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it also gives the ability to generate additional revenues, capturing the local prospective customers, and the ability to support uh, needed public infrastructure in the community. For nonprofits, they get the ability to uh, obtain PSA opportunities on our infrastructure where it's available, uh, and of course, the municipal partners can share portions of the revenue. Uh, as a company, uh, we provide modern public seating units. Uh, we replace any aged infrastructure that may be out there uh, at absolutely no cost to the community. Uh, we coordinate the placements with the, uh, with, uh, the Connect Up with staff in the county. Um, in addition to that, uh, we will fully identify the county, the state, uh, and the transit system from any legal liabilities that are associated with the program. Uh, typically, what we do is a million dollar uh, minimum of a million dollars. We actually have a, a, a 500, I'm sorry, a five million dollar umbrella policy that's in place as a company. Uh, so we're really big on that uh, and making sure that we're protecting our local partners as a part of that process. Uh, as a company, we strive to ensure that every bench uh, location is accessible to those with disabilities and safely put it, uh, placed uh, within the community. Uh, this is ensuring not only compliance with ADA but also achieving the Georgia Green Book design standards for safety and setback. Uh, requirements. <clears throat> the recommended bench options that we're proposing is uh, the, uh, we actually offer you two options uh, the Lexington unit, which is at the top, uh, and then we also have the Avenues, uh, which is at the bottom. Uh, the Avenues is a little bit uh, shorter in its dimensions. Uh, it's intended to be fit into places where you have limited right of way and not a lot of access to maybe have an additional uh, concrete pad placed. Uh, however, the, uh, what we see from municipal partners is the Lexington is the preferred option uh, in most communities. It has a very nice design to it. Uh, and of course, when we do our installations, they typically incur, it occurs in phases. And we typically do them in batches of 25 or 50, depending on the number of units that we're installing in the community uh, itself. As far as the placement control is concerned, the county will have complete uh, control over the placement of the public seating and any waste uh, removal units that are in place. You will have the right to not only review, but also to object to any placements. You'll have the right to request removal and relocation. Uh, and you'll have the ability, uh, of course, we will uh, coordinate with uh, the county staff uh, to identify any uh, potential placement locations. Uh, and any of the property owners that are adjacent to where the locations are picked also will have the ability to say thank you, but no thank you. And we will work with them accordingly and be respectful of their uh, rights as a property owner. From an operational perspective, uh, we are responsible for removing any of the graffiti, making any vandalism or uh, damage repairs, uh, taking care of maintenance in and around the, the immediate area, which is either a five or 10 foot radius around the units. Uh, we uh, take care of uh, any uh, 
advertisement issues, uh, it, making sure that they're uh, current uh, and in a state of good repair, and we also do any sort of uh, emergency work repairs in a timely fashion. Typically, we will have a four to, to five hour uh, response time in the event of uh, something being a public hazard. If there's an accident and the bench has been, you know, been damaged severely, uh, and uh, it's it's an immediate hazard to the public. Uh, you will have the ability to let us know and we'll uh, get out within a four to five hour period to have that uh, uh, situation uh, resolved uh, very quickly. Our, our maintenance program, we utilize modern technology to manage our daily activities. Every one of our units are barcoded, so you'll see this barcode placed on every single unit that's installed. Uh, and it's also GPS verified, so you'll have that data made available to you as soon as the unit is placed uh, in uh, service. As soon as it's installed and the data is installed, they install these uh, barcodes. Our, our team is required to scan them. Um, and uh, as soon as it's scanned, it automatically takes a picture and uh, GPS is the unit. Uh, and every time we go out and service it thereafter, they have to do the same thing. Uh, and that data is uh, collected through our handheld devices and, and is transferred in real time uh, and made available to our municipal partners online via uh, our Webport Live system. Uh, this is designed so that we are providing you with real-time proof of performance uh, on a daily basis, if so desired. Um, the Webport Live system, uh, it provides the county with direct interface and maintenance uh, to all of our service activities. Um, this connection uh, to the data allows you to generate reports um, on either a weekly, monthly, daily basis, however you want the reports, quarterly reports, uh, you will have access to that. Uh, it allows uh, online submission by your staff to us of any work orders. If you get a call or a complaint of vandalism or damage or, or anything like that to the unit, uh, then your staff can immediately let us know by going online and submitting a work order. <coughs> and of course, at the end of, of the job completion, the system will automatically notify our municipal partners that the work, uh, work orders have been uh, completed, uh, again, guaranteeing you the proof of performance that the job is getting done. This image here just gives you kind of a brief overview of how it works. These are the handheld devices that we use uh, in place, our MDAC systems that our staff uses when they're out in the field. Uh, anytime you create a work order, that uh, work order is generated and automatically sent to the handheld units or, of our staff within a matter of minutes. Uh, it also uh, automatically prioritizes the work responsibilities, so depending on what you select uh, as the type of uh, service that's needed, it prioritizes that any sort of vulgar vandalism or anything like that gets top priority. Uh, any public hazard issue gets uh, priority, uh, and of course it immediately lets your staff know for them to uh, go out and handle the maintenance. Um, and it sends back once the job is completed, you'll have access. Uh, they have to take both before and after pictures when servicing a site, so you'll actually get to see what's happening as far as what it looked like before and what it looks like after they're uh, done completing the work. So the, the specific, uh, what we're specifically proposing, uh, I'm going to briefly kind of go over the top uh, uh, key terms with you. Uh, generally speaking, we do a 10-year term with the option of the county to renew for an additional five-year term if you're satisfied with the service that you're receiving, uh, which we are confident uh, that you will be. Um, in addition, we will install uh, either the Lexington or the Avenue bench. Uh, you'll be able to not only choose the style of bench that you want, but also the color and design so that it reflects uh, your messaging or your branding. Uh, for your, your transit system, so we can actually tailor the color. If you give us the color codes, uh, we'll tailor the coloring accordingly. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we will also install the Lexington trash unit next to each of the benches that we install, um, where uh, it's mutually agreed upon by both parties that there's going to be a need for that location. Um, in addition, uh, Douglas County will receive a minimum of $150 uh, per unit uh, annual guarantee. Uh, for every single unit that we uh, uh, install or the greater of 20% of the net advertising revenues. This guarantees that as soon as the unit goes in, into the ground, you're guaranteed that minimum regardless of whether there's advertising or not on it. So it gives you immediate revenue opportunities. And then over time, as the revenues grow, uh, as, as it kicks in, you'll receive the greater portion uh, of the revenue that's generated from the program. <clears throat> So why choose COA? Obviously we have 35 years of industry experience. We are the largest provider of this type of service uh, in North America. Uh, in addition, uh, you can't work with over 300 municipalities and not be doing something right. <laughs> um, and so we're happy to provide you with uh, 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 
our references. If, if you so desire, we work with uh, both small uh, transit systems and large transit systems throughout the country uh, and throughout North America. Uh, we are committed to 100% client satisfaction, not only from our business clients, but also for our municipal partners, because without our municipal partners, we can't have the program to begin with. And we want to make sure that you're happy with this program because it's our intentions to serve your community for many generations to come. We want your business not only for today and here and now, but for many, many, many generations to come. So with that, if you have any specific questions, I'll take them. Well done. We got through that. That was a lot, but it was tight. It was very sufficient. So I appreciate that. A couple questions. We're going to keep this because uh, I know it's the first presentation. Gary, you've, um, you've worked with him already at conversations? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So then, then this will just be, yeah, I'm sure we can ask questions. All right. So uh, what I heard was two things. First question I've got three. Who's going to get an advertiser? You talked about local businesses. So yes, uh, for that? we are. We're totally responsible for that. What we do when we come into a community, once we've got the units fully installed uh, and everything is up and operational, then we will go out. Uh, we have a team that actually will come to uh, Douglas County and will actually reach out uh, to each of the uh, businesses within your community to let them know that uh, uh, the uh, opportunity is available to them. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, we will uh, bring in uh, and hire a local sales team uh, here in, in this area to, to come in and market uh, the product uh, and, and service opportunity uh, to the local businesses within the community itself. So, yeah, I, And I'm sure you've got a formal process, so again, you're, you're seasoned at this. One thing is in Douglas County, public engagement is important, <laughs> uh, reaching out, and you, you mentioned a, a word, public private partner, which means that it sounds like we would be in the room uh, yes. to a certain extent, um, and, and um, again, while you have a direct sales, it's like uh, the, the business I we had before, but we know the citizens, we know the businesses. So I would think that you would leverage that that knowledge. Or oh, absolutely, we would. Okay. Yes. All right. uh, and we work with local chambers. A lot of stuff we do. We, okay. we really reach out to the local chambers to help educate them about the product. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, you know, definitely we want them to uh, get your input yep. uh, on how best to reach out to your businesses in the community to let them know about uh, the program as well. Um, and so that's just all part of the whole process that we do. Uh, we, we work with our local municipal partners uh, in, in helping to get the word out about uh, uh, the, the services that are available and opportunities that are available. So. All right. Got you. Yeah, that's good. We'll, we'll dig deeper. We, do, we will get a copy of this, right? Yes. Right, I, I was told that you guys had would get a copy in your packets, but I've got some stuff downstairs I can bring up and leave with you. You're fine. You're, just, uh, not, you're fine. All right. Second question is, I, I, um, uh, I heard, what, 150? Did you say 150? Yes, a minimum of 150 dollars per unit per year. Right. So, on I mean, what? Did, give me a, a case study. You know, I have to say, you know, but a case study: 150,000 citizens, 100,000 adults. Um, I, I'm saying a ridership of I don't know less than 10,000, 5,000. What does that look like? Uh, as far as the potential revenue that could be generated with that, yeah. um, you know, that's something that obviously we will assess, you know, in, in, as we move forward and give you a little bit better idea. Yeah. But generally speaking, you know, for a community, uh, you know, like Douglas uh, County, you know, you're, you're still relatively a growing community, uh, but you still have some rural aspects to you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we don't you know, anticipate there being a, a huge revenue, you know, uh, generation from it because right now there's only roughly about uh, understand 50 locations now that you guys have about 75. Oh, 75 locations. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, you're talking about let's just say we were able to install at all 75, you know, locations. Um, you know, you're you're probably talking um, as far as you know the potential revenue for 75 units. Um, I mean that could generate. You know, well, again, it, it all kind of depends on the community itself. It's a little bit hard to judge, but we have some uh, community or some benches that are in a little bit more urbanized area uh, than than Douglas County, um, and it, you know, the revenue could be upwards of anywhere between I would say seven to ten thousand uh, a month in, in revenues that are being generated from the program. Um, and uh, it can go from there. It just depends on how involved the businesses are. No, you're, you're fine. You don't, you don't have to commit. We're, yep. Just, yep. we're looking for a framework, right? Right. Um, and, and I can give you some more specifics on it from, from our other side of the team. I don't get, them, get into that side of the, okay. <laughs> the one piece. More, one more question. No, you're fine. And, and again, you're, what I'm also listening to is that, do you see Douglas, right? Like, did you, 
right, um, this is not an urban area. And mm -hmm. So your comments were, were authentic in how you responded in framing your response. Because I'm just listening for you to say, like, okay, one of the things is important that we don't, it's important that this, this doesn't become a nuisance. Mm -hmm. This is bedroom, right? It's, it, it can't be intrusive. It Correct. can't occupy. It has to blend. Uh, which brings me to my last question, which is aesthetics. And I, I'll let my staff figure out which bench, but let's say as I've done this connect, you know, connect up with colors. Um, um, I, I mean, I'm sure that will all blend in, but I still need to find the bus stop. So if I can't see the bus stop today, that's an inside joke. Not that how we'll see the bench, but how how will you? All right. So if we've got 75 stops. Gail, you guys will talk through this. We're not saying every bus stop warrants a bench or doesn't in your mind. And I, yeah. I'm looking for y'all to tell me, and I'm open, I don't have a leaning. Yeah, and I could say this, you know, typically when we come in, you know, we don't put a stop at every single bus stop. It grows over time. Yes. Um, because, you know, ridership is important, and not every site is going to justify the need for a bench. But that's where we want to be able to partner with the transit staff to make sure that we're placing the infrastructure where it's needed most, yeah. not just you know, where it's you know, uh, best marketable from an advertising perspective. Um, and so part of that has to be the process as we go through this, yeah. understanding what the ridership numbers are. Yeah. Uh, and we know that you're relatively, you know, you're young in that data collection stage of your ridership. Uh, but over time, you know, you know your community best and where you feel like it's going to be the best need. But over time, we'll work with the data, the analysis of the data, to understand where the ridership warrants the units being most. Okay, I'm going to yield for now, Madam Chair. Please. Okay, thank you so much, Vice um, Chairman. Uh, I have just a few questions regarding practicality. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is based on perception. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the actual benches. I think they're great, and they will serve our community well. But the you know, running sometime. What about overhead infrastructure to protect those citizens that may be sitting on the ground and they may have an umbrella? But do you have uh, amenities such as overhead? You're the shelters? Little, little shelter? Uh, as, as a company, we do not do the shelters. There are other companies that do the shelter. And the reason why is because um, the, the, the shelter construction uh, mm -hmm. is an extremely expensive process. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you put a shelter over a unit, uh, it, there's a lot more that has to go into uh, in, in the funding of it uh, because you have to meet uh, a lot more uh, stringent federal standards per FTA uh, and ADA. Uh, and it dramatically increases the cost and it, a lot depends on the individual sites. Sometimes the sites, um, the terrain of the sites make it very, very expensive. So the average shelter, even on the cheap end, you're talking you know, $18,000 on average for a shelter. Um, and so, you know, that can be very expensive and it's very, very difficult to get your return on investment. And because as a company, we want to work with local businesses in the community, a local business isn't going to be able to potentially afford that level of, of advertising costs that is associated with doing the shelters. Uh, our units on average would be $130 a month, uh, whereas a shelter is typically four, or five, six hundred $600 a month. Um, or better in some cases depending on the location um, and that's not our business model so we just don't do shelter advertising but we do work in partnership uh, with the local communities if, if you want to to have shelters in your community then if you want to find a provider that, that specializes in that and there are companies that do specialize in that uh, then we'll work in partnership with with the county and the team to uh, to, to allow you to accommodate those needs as well um, and of course if you guys do grant funding then that's part of the revenue generation program. It, help, it helps to give you the seed money uh, to help uh, utilize that to help uh, secure the grants, the FTA grants that are available out there to you uh, to build the shelters. Okay, so, it, was, it was just a general question. Yeah. This is for DOT. Uh, I was introduced to red clay mud 17 years ago when I, was, when I moved to Georgia. And <laughs> it's not easy to get off anything. So are we planning to place some red, I mean some uh, concrete slabs in all the places? Would that be part of the... Well, I, actually, uh, Chairman, I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be one of my questions too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Green Book standards, yeah. guidelines for, for the placement of, of the units. Uh, obviously, they need to be placed where they're going to be utilized, but there's also potentially pedestrian flow that has to be accommodated in, at least in some of the locations so the question would be um, 
is the installation, uh, does it include addressing the area? If you have curb and gutter there, you may need an ADA ramp to get up to, uh, to the station. Um, if there is no ramp and it's just uh, the side of the road, what kind of setback uh, and what kind of surface would we be looking at? Or are now, you talking we, about strictly the units? No, no. Uh, typically what we do is, is any of the units, when we install, like the Lexington unit, let's just say we're going to do the Lexington unit, uh, and it's, it's the preferred design. All of those are installed on ADA accessible concrete pads. Um, and typically what we do, if there's sufficient, if there's sufficient right-of-way that's available, then we will construct the pad to sit outside of the existing sidewalk. Um, and uh, uh, if there is <coughs> sufficient space within your sidewalk to allow for the bench to be placed, uh, then we'll do that. And we'll also sometimes, uh, if there's not enough room on the back side, then we'll build the additional space and concrete pad on the front side to allow the free flow of uh, pedestrian traffic, uh, meeting the ADA standards and the safety design uh, step backs. And of course, we'll have to evaluate each site. Some sites, you know, you might be able to put a bus stop there, but you not, may not be able to get a bench there because there's limited right of way um, or the terrain is, is insufficient to allow for the, the required setback requirements. Uh, anytime you do not have curb and gutter, uh, curb and, <laughs> sorry, curb and gutter, uh, then we meet the uh, recommended uh, uh, DOT uh, suggested setback requirements uh, that exist. So we would, we would follow the guidelines of the Florida, I'm sorry, the Georgia Green Book standard for the setback. Gotcha. Have you gotten into any situation where um, the location is so important, critical, desirable, uh, that you would actually envision or engage in acquisition of an easement perhaps to, to locate? Yeah, the there's a, typically as a company, you know, we work strictly within the right of way and we don't, we, we don't, you know, because it's just, it's, the easements are just, it's, it's a lot of legal hoops, so we leave that to the responsibility of the local governing partner um, to, to acquire the easements that are necessary. Plus it could be extremely expensive. <laughs> And then my last question, I'm trying to keep up with the yeah. chairman of this committee. Three, so I'll just say one more. Um, trash units, I thought that was very attractive to, to be sitting beside the benches. However, uh, I'm big on the aesthetics and trash uh, compactors or units. They attract a lot of trash and people drinking sodas and all that is hanging out. I'm not sure if I would like that idea because what happens if they're not changed out, if you come once a month, who? Who's responsible for changing the units um, out? Well, it just depends. Like I said, sometimes the local municipal partner has uh, uh, the uh, desire to, to do that themselves. Now, I'll tell you, for, for you know, 50 to 75 units, it's not usually within our business model to do that, so we leave that up to the, the local municipal partner. Um, as, as we grow our, in our territory and we add staff and other, you know, other municipal partners to the process, then we're able to combine and build a territory sufficient enough for us to be able to hire somebody to do that full time. Um, and when it comes to the removal of the trash, um, we sometimes will take over that responsibility once we get to a certain level. Um, and so we know that we're not going to have trash cans at every single location just because it's not something that's going to be necessary. Um, but when we run into situations where we're doing the service and there is a volume of trash that's occurring and accumulating, then typically our system automatically picks up if work orders are created and, and so forth, or, or our guys come out and we're seeing an enhanced uh, amount of trash building up at a location, it bumps up the service responsibility from maybe being serviced weekly to being serviced every three days, you know, depending on the situation. Uh, in, in our more urban areas, that's typically the way the process is designed to work is, is that our system picks up and says, okay, this is a red flag. It needs additional service uh, beyond just the standard service that we all, you know, offer. So that's, that's typically the way it works. And we have a choice whether we want receptacles out there or not, right? Is that part of yeah, you, you it, certainly, because we're not going to we're not going to place a receptacle in a, in a location where you, it's not wanted or desired. Okay. Um, and so, any of the you will have complete placement control uh, over any of the units, whether it's a trash unit or whether it's a a, a bench or another you know device you know. <coughs> um, and so you'll have complete control over that. 
Okay. Um, you know, so that that's kind of one of the options that you have. You know, say for example, you know, if, if we're doing um, over time, if the county decides, okay, you know, we, we have the bench now, we want something else. You know, we have an area that maybe it doesn't have a transit stop, but it's a heavy trash area. And sometimes we'll come in and offer the community uh, to uh, install uh, recycling units that are independent recycling units that are at major activity centers where there's a lot of trash building up along the side, you know, sidewalk and so forth. So there's different things that we do in partnership with our local uh, municipal partners. Okay. I'm just, I'll just add some, just some benchmark for some other uh, some of the customers who have the experience of having those receptacles out there. Yeah, generally speaking, um, you know, it, it's rare that there's a problem. Um, you know, most of the trouble that you have is, is sometimes in more of the rural areas, you'll get people to take their household trash to that location. Mm -hmm. You know, drop it in, the, you know, as they're driving down the road. Um, and, and, you know, obviously, you know, we, we try to work and even within the con, you know, uh, construct of our contract, you know, we, we try to work on enforcement, code enforcement, you know, aspects uh, to ensure that if we're having a problem at a location, we're, we're working in partnership with the local community to ensure enforcement, uh, working with local uh, our local partners to curtail that type of activity because it does happen from time to time, but uh, it's usually a rarity. Yeah, no, no, very good. We're going to keep this was very good information. Uh, one last thing, and, I, and I, I, we're closing. And the, the intent is um, we work directly with our direct our, our directors. Um, for next steps, um, this is just a committee to hear it. Um, which is, we've got advertising that we talked about inside our Connect Douglas inside the buses. Now we're talking about perhaps advertising uh, at these stops, which is fine. I'm, I'm hoping that staff will have, again, one more time, a holistic view of this moment. Like, right, okay, so we're, we're, who's advertising? I mean, there, there needs to be a strategy behind this, right? It, it just can't be. Um, this is more to our, our staff. If, it, I mean, if every vendor that comes in here that pitches a certain corner of the market, which is a brand new market, it's just like, okay, we, I want to make sure that there's a, a marketing strategy that overlays this and say, okay, gosh, I need to align this. Right? Let's optimize this moment. Right? Let's optimize our partners. Because um, everybody wants audience to a brand new, uh, you know, and as they say, everybody's like, oh man, Douglas is open for business. So everybody's going to come across that river and they're trying to get access to our citizens. And so, as um, under shepherds, it's important that we protect them. We need to align them. And it just the messaging has to be on point. It has to be beneficial. So I'm hoping that there's a somewhere in here there's a strategist that builds some marketing that will make sure this is properly aligned. And I'm not saying y'all got to do it, but you just got to ensure that it gets done. Um, and so if y'all understand where I'm coming from, just protect the people. Anything else I'm sure on that? Just align the strategy. Yes, my, my question to the community is. Do we need a recommendation from the committee to continue uh, discussions with Creative Outdoor um, on this uh, possible project? Is it the committee's desire for us to, to go in that direction? Well, well, just stay with us. And I think first things first, which is we need we know we need benches. Mm -hmm. right. So worry all with your bench strategy. Right? This just becomes a supplement to that, right? So I gotta put advertisement to the side. What are we there to accommodate our seniors, those people are disabled? Remember, that's our purpose first. Fulfill the needs of the citizens, make sure that they're able to access appropriately. Now, this is an overlay, right? So where are you at with that? I think once you come up with it, okay, we've got 75 of these um, pipes in the ground, um, you know, bus stops, well, how many of those are going to get shelters? What is your plan for those? How are you going to do that? And so I think that comes along with this, but I, I want to hear the shelter game first before I can talk. They can go hand in hand. So I would say continue on, but I got to hear citizens seating first versus trying to market to the things. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Well, well I, I will say this. Um, as Jerry said, we have federal grant opportunities for shelters and benches. In fact, we already have a grant in place for, I think it's eight benches and, and four shelters okay. that, that we can go ahead and proceed with those. Um, so we got funding or it's in play? We have funding in place and, in more, place and more is available, yes sir. Now to Jerry's point, if, 
if we were to, to contract with them for benches, that would clear up more money that we could use to purchase the shelters with, and they are expensive. So I think we need, here's what I think right now at this point. So in my mind, this is not a professional service. So we would need to go out with the, for RFPs for other companies. There might be other companies out there that do the same thing. I don't think we can just contract with, I don't think this is a professional service. Now, it may be, I don't know, but in my mind, looking at the definition, looking at the ordinance, then it's not. Um, no, just, just, and I appreciate that when I think marketing advertising, what are they providing us? Uh, marketing advertising, if I'm, I'm, I'm footing the bill on that shelter, if we're footing it, then it, what you're offering us is marketing, which is consulting, which is professional service. But I'm okay, I'm gonna let you go work that out. I, I think that the ask was, should y'all continue on? And I would say, sure I said, give you the administrative concurrence to keep looking at that and come back with a more refined overall, how are y'all gonna approach this? How are you gonna fund it? Where is it gonna go? And, and I guess to your point, who do we use ultimately? See, there's two separate things. There's marketing, it's like, yeah, but we still need the shelters. We still, if we got money in place, prior to him walking through that door, that was the conversation, where are the benches going? Where's the shelters going? This accelerates that conversation and say, okay, there's more offsets, there's a, a, a need, but I'm, I'm seeing it slightly. Um, so I, I'd like for y'all to just come back. This is a good presentation. Yeah, yeah great presentation. And by no means is there any disrespect to you, but I oh, no, totally agree with what you're, I mean, I like the idea, but I, we just need to make sure that we're doing what we're yeah. supposed to do. Yeah. You, you need to comply with your local ordinance requirements as far as you know the, the bidding process is concerned. And we don't have a problem if you guys decide to take it out to bid. Communities do that all the time. And so it's just part of the process and uh, certainly there are other providers out there. Uh, you know, the, I think it's one of the things we always like to tell people is just make sure you do your research on the companies um, that are out there and that you know what product and service you're getting and, and be sure to do that. Um, but uh, if you guys decide to put this out to RFP, we will certainly be bidding on it uh, without any problems. Which is great, again, but the marketing should not drive our decision. Yep. The bench, it, it, that has to be the forefront. So one more time, where is your strategy that you're thinking on making sure that these shelters and or seats are out there as the next step of this system? That's, that, that's what we want to hear. I mean, you let the, let the small business say, well, why don't you put a bench over there which will benefit them, but does it benefit the needs of the citizens that it could be somewhere else? So that's why. Well, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, please. If, if I may, I need to yeah, you know what I, I'm do, saying. Yeah. I do hear you, and, and I agree. I think this is potentially an option, but we have to explore other options and see how that aligns with our overall uh, program, mm -hmm. uh, and then decide uh, whether this particular one is the one that we would want to go with, or uh, it could be something. That but then also our topography was very unique in Douglas County, so I, I know we need an assessment first to determine what these particular areas, all the areas do, will they accommodate a bench? So you've got to do some, some uh, just some preliminary and, 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 we're, and, and come back to us. As, as has been mentioned, we're only two months into this. We're still collecting data on mm -hmm. what, what our, our, our most utilized stops are. Right. And, uh, as, as I said, we already have money in place for several shelters and, and some benches, mm -hmm. but we're not ready to pull the trigger yet on, on where we're going to, to place that that first uh, set of, of shelters. Uh, we, I would say we need a couple of more months at least with New Jamal on, yes. on getting that better. Which is my point. Mm -hmm. Mark, you can drive your decision. We're good. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll bring some packet information up here. Please. Because Make sure <laughs> I you. think you guys would be able to. I'll bring that up to you. But you did very well. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate this presentation. Very enlightening. Um, uh, Gary, you know what the next steps you guys have on you. Uh, a great presentation. Thank you. Miguel, yes, uh, uh, Commissioner, the, the next item on the agenda is an update on the active bus service package uh, round. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. make this real quick. Guys, I gotta take this. This is being recorded. <laughs> Guys, this is being recorded. I need to go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, make this real quick before you have the, the daily ridership totals for the fifth route service. 
uh, for the first uh, days of the month of August. Yep. Uh, three of the four routes are doing really well. Uh, I'm thrilled at Route 40 and its, its performance. Um, we're having the number of transfers between our service and Cobb Link. So, so that process uh, is working well. Uh, routes 10 and 20 yep. uh, have solid ridership. Yep. Uh, as we've talked about before, Route 30, yep. Thornton Road, um, uh, Riverside Parkway um, is lagging a little bit. Um, I think we had a bit of a breakthrough uh, yesterday when Jamal and I had a, a talk with uh, the uh, Southeast Transportation Director for Amazon and so they're very interested in a shelter uh, a stop at, at their location and we feel like uh, we're going to be able to make that happen uh, moving forward and and to get Amazon really behind us and promoting this would be we would be big for that route. Well, on, well, two things on, on, on routes and you're right for 40 regards to knowledge that perhaps would be the home run. I, I, I've been in conversations with people that are just out in the community and they still don't have the perception that they can make it all the way over to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it's like and it's like, no, we'll work on that. We'll make sure that yeah. You know, and it wasn't to, to well what do you mean? Because again one more time everybody doesn't see everything. We're not out there totally, but uh, that that you know that they're excited to hear that it was there. But I think this video and some things that we're doing when we get it out here. But but to that point, one thing that we learned in the public engagement out of the Hilton Hotel uh, and some of the um, those major commercial um, um, taxpayers were saying that the route time wasn't according to the normal schedule for light industrial. Right, and I remember the lady I was standing on, she was right standing um, right in front of her, and it was like. Um, the six to seven o'clock, you know, it was sort of early, five or six in the morning, right? In other words, if you got to be at work from the seven to eleven, whatever that second shift, I don't know what it is, eleven to seven, seven to whatever the case may be, we didn't quite align. I'm just I'm using that more of a, as a reference point. Um, so that, that you know, is there an earlier shift? Because remember, I don't know that ain't gonna help us because you, you, they need to be work before you start. So is there, you will know, let ridership drive our, our decision, but um, is there a time adjustment, not just stop adjustment, but does the time meet the need of the citizens, uh, which means the commercial citizens to get people back and forth to work? It's not an answer that you need to solve right now, but it's something to think about, which is as you're out there talking to these, uh, like Amazon, I, I think there's still the question, what is the more perfect time for the majority of your people that need to get to work? The traditional, Second shift, not work third shift. I worked at the Ritz Carlton when I was young in high school, like a bucket. I know what that is. Right? Uh, and so I have ex experience. So, and so I'm saying, okay, so does our route for the number 30 coincide with the traditional area in which you're trying to serve? And if we miss that window, does it require us to maybe rethink the time, which I know has an impact? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing we can answer right now, but it's something that you need to put on the list. Yeah. So later. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, but this is good. This is early, 60 days in. Um, there's not much more we can do right now, right, until we get that more assessment, right? Yes, yeah, sir. It looks like it's doing good. Just a question. Yeah. Uh, yes. Route 30, is that the one along the industrial? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's one. Yes. So the Amazon will help increase that sum, right? I guess. Mm -hmm. that's 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 yes. 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 Your ridership. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Commissioner Robinson, um, we, you know, because of ships, and that may be the problem. I mentioned that probably about two weeks ago, so we maybe, and I know we, our route stopped, it stopped running at 8.30, right, about 8.30 time frame, and, and, and you know, you've got people that get off at 11, so that, that travel is probably the same. Well, can do it so it's not the so that's, we may have to. Yeah. Either that way. And again, that's, that's part of our ongoing evaluation process. And stitch fit uh, fixes that back to Shoals area in that area uh, in that corner, the third. Is that back to that business? Is yeah. it, 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 it's it's this point, no. Mm -hmm. the, you won't make the bus, but you have to you have to walk a distance. Oh, okay. distance. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, you can walk it. 
Or we could adjust the route to yeah, it's in a general yeah. area. Yeah. You can make a flex. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, duly noted. Let's just not belabor this right now. This is good for us to look at. Uh, that was good. Yep. Uh, Gary, again, you provide the reports. Now, this is a report that you provide, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so where's the reports from Transit? And if I may speak to this report, this yeah. report does come from uh, Passio Go, which is the technology that Transition has. Yeah. So it, it can also be drilled down to show more specific whether routers are getting on per stop. This is just per route that the I report is being shown. But it can get down to per, uh, to per stop. First stop, which is some of the decisions you'll be making when you're going to put. Uh, put the shelf. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So you can get access. Okay. Yes, sir. Have we noticed an increase in ridership with us, with school starting back? Yes, sir. 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 And we get those stops in a place that's a little more conducive. And this student is he's, he's willing to work with us. Also, yes, mm -hmm. he's not. Okay. All right, so that, that being said, are we okay with the report? And now, Gary, do you want to add anything else to this part of the conversation? <coughs> you no, know, I was trying to say, all in all, everything's going pretty well. Still, still a few little glitches that we're dealing with, but running pretty smooth. Yes. All right, and again, <coughs> the thing that is important, and I'm sure that's ask the question about students, and we only got one school that we passed, right? Is that true? Uh, yeah. One, two. Uh, well, Ella, on the middle school that we passed. Stewart Middle School. Stewart Middle School. Yeah, mm -hmm. we should have. Yes. Okay, we did Stewart. So, um, which I'm less seeing as a target as opposed to a high school. Yes, sir. Um, getting somewhere independent without parents and stuff. Mm -hmm. The second question is, is there, um, if I got the money, can I get on it? If I'm middle school, school do I need to go home? Well, I our, our, what is our, our, po our policy is that uh, you have to be nine and over to yes. ride the bus. I wanted to hear the number. I, just, I wouldn't leave you any one way or another. I just wanted to hear what it was. That, that, and that we stayed in line for like the more the welfare. She can be that young and run, ride the bus by herself. Okay, nine. Okay. All right, so all right, we'll, we'll come back to logistics. Anything else on this one, guys? Let's keep going. You okay, Gary? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's, let's okay, yes. And, and the next item related to this, actually, uh, when as we get more data in and we're in a position to uh, try to understand what it means and what we should do about it and make decisions, we need to have a uh, a guideline, a protocol on how to make changes, whether they be changes to the routes, changes to the services, the hours, etc. And uh, so we'd like to have a discussion on how um, we go about making decisions, what our protocol is. And, and basically, what we were just wanting to do with this is, is to let the committee know that we're working on this, this policy. Uh, what will be our procedure and protocol as we get ready to make these these changes? Mm -hmm. uh, what what will be uh, what might be considered minor changes that we can do administratively, or what are the major changes that we'll need to go before a public hearing and before board of commissioners? So we'll be fleshing out those details over the next few weeks um, and have something to present to the community. Maybe not in September, but in October. Mm -hmm. on how we're going to go about uh, approving these changes. And, I, and I, I, I like the way you frame that. We'll keep this, keep it very tight. And, and you guys should come back with a recommendation to the committee. Um, and I, if I had to say, if you think about changing a system, meaning routes, <coughs> bus stops, shelters, those are major touch points with citizens. And so if you talk about the board of commissioners, what they care about is anything that impacts your citizens. If it's internally to your point on, on so sort of how y'all, what time y'all move, go pick up, it, it, there's, there's, there, there is different touch points, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, um, the commissioners want to make sure they get visibility. Um, and, and what is the rationale uh, for making a decision? Um, again, this is, um, 
this truly is a system and it, it requires um, input. Um, what we want to avoid is perhaps the political overlay that comes with certain systems, which we know what happens. And we, we really we want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all agree on the protocol. Uh, for example, we use one for example. This is one we've talked about uh, at the board commissioners level already, which is um, just like we changed the route um, going from what, Riverside um, or Thornton all the way over to AT Homes and got on at the epicenter right. In other words, the rationale was, at least my, my point was, okay, you're right, nobody's going down the street in this, in this, this bus, let's, let's hit the ride with Cobb. Well, we've had recent conversations saying that, well, why are we making a left on to off a of fair road to go down the lead road and sit in the traffic? Like, how is that adding to the ridership experience when we're further down I-20? Why don't we just keep on down fair road and make a left on lead road? Look at, look at the people we're resurfacing with that, apartments, uh, in their schools, uh, parks. So we recognize that that's on the top of the list is perhaps a system modification, but, but heaven forbid if we would make that change independent of visibility. Um, and, and so I wouldn't want the community to be able to have that type of authority to go and just say, well, just change it. We, we want to have, you want to have buy-in you know, for, for something like that. What are the trade-offs? What are the implications? So I'm using that for an example. We're saying we wouldn't tackle that. The first year, we think that would be the first time that we have enough data to warrant such a change. So Gary, I'm going to say that in your policy, you're going to talk about something as big as that, a whole uh, route change, or to add a route, um, to modify a route, uh, to add a bus stop, take away a bus stop, to add a shelter, take away shelter, to do advertising, et cetera. Are you the policy would provide us with the process on, on how to, to make a huge change okay. like that. Let's just mm -hmm. wait until it comes back. I'm sure I say, let, 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 let your staff come over to the to to respond to. Mm -hmm. and, then we can and then also, uh, my expectations would be that this policy is structure and also it is insulation to, uh, for example, me when you want to get all the phone calls, this is not quite working, and so I will respond spontaneously. I will have something to yes, reference exactly. and say, according to our policy, and then that'll give me some teeth. Right. Just, you know, when that, there's some pressure. So I appreciate that, and I look forward to this policy kind of going very soon. Okay? Yes, but, and if I may add, that it, it's, it's going to make a distinction where there's going to be a lot of decisions uh, that we have to make uh, on the clock, so to speak, for, the, for logistical reasons. We're not talking about those going to the world. We're talking about major policy mm -hmm. items up in, and that it will make that distinction. Perhaps 90% of the decisions changes tweaks whatever we would do as a matter of the process, and, and the other would be a matter of policy coming before the board. And, and I would think that, you know, if, you know between Cobb system, Gwinnett system, uh, you know, people out there already have these models mm -hmm. in place that you don't have to figure There's, There's also the MTA requirements. FTA, why do you name it? I mean, FD. So I, I think we should have a, I mean, I'm sure you're that happy. Thank you. <laughs> I won't, we won't belabor it. Yeah, you're yeah. We're good? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. All right. We're good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Yeah. Okay, yes. We can get through that. Mark, you, oh, you got that, Mark? Mm -hmm. You know how we're going to handle this? You're going to come back to the staff. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. The last item uh, on the transit side um, is a discussion about an advisory committee for paratransit. As you know, paratransit, providing paratransit uh, services is a requirement uh, once you have to fix that. And so we have to develop and flesh this out. And so Gary's going to run us through uh, the thinking about um, how to go about making decisions on having an advisory committee to assist with that. Okay. This, this will be another advisory committee uh, for the county, uh, somewhat similar to the Animal Control Advisory Board. It would be along those same lines. Uh, we would have community members on this committee, sp specifically uh, members of the uh, uh, disabled uh, community mm -hmm. um, and Jamal, you want to talk about uh, how the, the committee would be structured, the number of people yes. on it. So, so the full committee would be structured with uh, six people. It would be the transit service coordinator, county administrator, or a county commissioner, or their representative, or your appointee. 
and then also three advocates of the senior and disabled community, as Mr. Gary stated. Mm -hmm. um, so they will serve on the board for uh, two years, and then once we elect, uh, once the Connect Douglas elects the three people or three candidates, we push that out to the board of commission and then let them uh, agree and approve that those three members. And what, and, and basically what, what we do again with uh, most of the other advisory committees, um, we, we would accept uh, nominations, applications uh, from the public. Uh, we would collect those names and then submit them to the Board of Commissioners mm -hmm. uh, for them to, to determine who's going to be on the committee. You did say this was a requirement by FTA? It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this meeting is just to frame the conflict between we need to have these in place and need to be in place by a certain period of time? No. No, but it's, it, now that things have sort of settled down a little bit, it's time for us to get this committee mm -hmm. in place. And would you use this committee, for example, would you use this committee for route changes, um, independent of board? I'm, I'm trying to get for, what will their role be again? They, they would be our sounding board for anything related to the, the paratransit service. If they don't, they don't like the style of wheelchair with the accommodations. The accommodations, mm -hmm. right. Okay. I will input. Stand by input. That what I'm hearing? Yes. Their input, they're, they're not a formal recommending body, or are they? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're good. So, I mean, I guess, I mean, I mean Madam Chair, I mean, when it's time to present this, I say, administrative concurrence is go straight to the Board of Commission. I'm looking to be involved in this as opposed to us doing it here at this committee. That, you know, I respect. Okay. I mean, unless y'all got something you're ready to go with now. It, was there an ask here, or was this just sort of a broken fact that this, you do it? This was just kind of an information. Yeah, just an um, we, we have everything in place. Uh, we're sort of ready to go forward with start uh, uh, advertising for applicants to be on the, yeah. the committee. All right, so on this committee, so when you do this, do you have a, a committee meeting? Who's going to be running it? You? Uh, but the six, the six people that I mentioned would be the mm -hmm. transit coordinator, mm -hmm. and I apologize I didn't mention the compliance officer, but the compliance officer would be a part of it as well. But, but that is going to be steering. Jamal that would be steering that's that's why as, as transit service coordinator. He was, so, he so was you got these rules of engagement around how you would do your committee. There'll be meeting minutes. If the this for the formal part, that I want to make sure we're also acknowledged. Just when we came on my HOA boot camp, like they got to be prepared to facilitate that and. Um, because anything they say in that meeting, um, I mean, you get it. So can we just assure before we start advertising, are you, do you have your catcher's mitt in hand? Before? Because the, the people are going to come. And how will we select these people? Which it sounds like uh, you're advertising. Mm -hmm. get it. Same, Same process. process. We normally do when yeah. we go into the that they say uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same process. Yeah. Yeah. On the par uh, paratransit uh, component, you know, that was necessary for the see that and all that, so we're ready to do that. So I'm ex we're excited about that piece, but do you have an idea when we're going to start exploring on demand? Will that ever be an option in Douglas County, or we just, just have something we probably need to explore? That's one of our projects for 2020, is, mm -hmm. is to start exploring on demand and, and, and get everything, the process in place okay. for that. Yeah. So, the, no, uh, <laughs> said, no, she's planning to see. So put that on the list um, on demand, which we know is part of the uh, the 2015. It was right behind the other two things. We're good. Um, that being said, but it helps feel other uh, provides another option for those other parts of the county. Mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I want to come back to this because I want to fall. County, oh, he's gone. All right, we want to make sure that we've got um, the, the task that's going to come out of this. You come up with a formal recommendation. Um, there's nothing to make a recommendation for yet, right? Or are you ready to go to the Board of Commissioners? No, you mean in, in reference to the committee? Yeah. Yeah. Committee. No, no, sir. I think no. once we start, well, I, I guess like Mr. Gary stated, is to ask that we can move forward with trying to get the candidates and then once we have mm -hmm. unless unless you want us to, to make a presentation. We gotta make a presentation board uh, about, about the committee. No way you can go out yeah. to to, to the bid without the law. Uh, okay. Yeah. So all right, so I give it a minute, I'm okay with the administrative 
the current just come straight to the board of commissioners make a presentation and we authorize from there. You need your buy-in, guys. You know, because we don't want to do this like um, just let them get involved in this. Just this part, sure. the structure of the committee, something with this type of authority. Um, I don't want to be an over influence on this one, just not on this topic. So then bring straight forward at your pleasure, Madam Chair. Uh, you were kind of nice, Mark. Did you hear that part? Yes, I'll buy you time. No, all right. Okay, all right. So Sorry, you, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> all right. So, we y'all were okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Gary? Yes, sir. We're okay that way. Yes, so, sir. Administrator could come straight to the Board of Commissioners to make a formal, take the same version up to them, a little bit more formal on the timing. So, uh -huh. for the creation of this committee. Okay. Uh, and we call it advisory committee. All right. Miguel, anything right. else? Not on this topic. All right. Keep going. Yep. Next item is a discussion, continued discussion about the on call consulting contract. Yes. Uh, and, and I'll ask your guidance as to how much of what we've talked about previously do we need to get into. Uh, where we are is obviously we've been before this committee, had some discussion, we went before the purchasing committee, had additional discussion, and we are poised with 11 firms uh, to provide services uh, in, in 11 different service areas of transportation. Uh, the discussion at the, uh, the uh, purchasing committee, uh, as you may recall, related to uh, potentially let's move these this batch of contracts, let it go to the board and and have them being considered, but at the same time open up the process, go uh, back out and notify everybody that this is available again and, and allow for others to come in make a, a, a bid for the services and that we could add to the 11 uh, firms uh, as many as as necessary to uh, to have at least three per service area and I, I believe it was as many as five if I remember that correctly um, as many between three and five in each service area. Right now, because of the way the process played out, there were some firms who were qualified under the phase one um, assessment to bid on uh, phase two, they did not. And so, uh, but they are otherwise qualified firms at GDOT and, and other places. Some of them, they indicated to us that unfortunately the the notification from the county didn't go uh, to the right individual or the right bin, and somehow they missed the opportunity. It was not for lack of desire, but uh, and certainly uh, they've indicated that they're definitely willing to participate, uh, uh, interested in work with the county. So if this is open back up, they would definitely be bidding. If it, if it's open. Okay, that's where we are. And that's a great update, and, and that's exactly where we are. Uh, seeing I serve as the vice chairman on the purchasing committee, um, there was um, a conversation regarding this, and there was some action. So I want the county administrator to be the validation um, thread between the two committees. Um, I'm of the position to accept the recommendation of the committee to allow certain task orders to go forward and to and then refresh based on your comments just made and the conclusion that was made in that committee. So, uh, County Minister, remind me, we had this conversation, we were making up the record. The yes, recommendation of the project we said would go forward would be Chapel Hill. Um, it was Chapel Hill. There was um, Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard. Yeah, there Highway 5, Northbound Turnaround. Northbound Turnaround, Douglas Boulevard. Right? Mm -hmm. Turnaround. Yes, sir. Right, going northbound. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the Riverside Signal Light. Yeah, and I'm going to Yeah. Signal light, right? Yes. All right. And then there will be Maxim Road. Um, yes. The Maxim Thornton building hall. Is that all? Yeah. Was well, th there's th those are definitely projects that are pending and task orders that are pending. However, the service areas, the 11 different service areas, some of them are for not the entire gamut of things, but for surveying services, for example, right of way acquisition. So we have the need for right-of-way acquisition on the Chapel Hill uh, road widening and, and a turn lane project. That's coming up. We have need for uh, 
road design services related to the lead road extension. So there's a whole gamut of things that are not these five projects, but are services that we need going forward in the immediate future. Okay. But the, the ask in, in the committee was, what's up right now for all of our projects that are mission critical? Mm -hmm. I laid out all the projects, gave it all the, laid out the game chart, laid out the critical path mm -hmm. for all the projects. It's what's up next that's needed to not slow down those mission critical projects. Mm -hmm. Recognizing there's tasks all behind them, it's let's just not slow that down while we refresh. That was the objective. Mm -hmm. So, what, what? So, in our conversations, and it, it's not to. It's what's needed right now was to ask, and so these things were said to us. So we talked about it, and so it's like okay, we'll let these go based on what we just heard. The, the immediate task, not an ongoing contract for a whole year or two, three years up. It's, all right, let's keep this system moving. Let's award the task to this individual for this immediate thing right now. And then we refresh um, simultaneously. And then we, we come back to, so you just refresh. So it's like, okay, get to the moment, refresh. That's what we talked about, kind of ministering. We had a conversation regarding that comprehension of what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I'm going to just leave it at that. So I was prepared to, based on that, go ahead and, and, and pull a, a, a solicit a recommendation, motion for a recommendation, based on those four projects uh, that were suggested as being mission critical, to move forward with them to the full board commission. So at the next meeting, we're saying go. But mm -hmm. and then we come back and at that same point simultaneously, we are refreshing the list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and certainly that, that helps. That would be helpful. But what I'm suggesting is that soon thereafter, there are other tasks that we need to engage in. But so, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, for that, Madam Chair, you mm -hmm. want to? Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Because what happened, uh, the second round would be allows us to catch the ride. And yet, the second time, right now, we have some specific projects that understand the number. Based on just listening to discussions that the purchasing almost like in the world We want to move forward with those specified mission critical projects and then we'll come back and cast around the net to make sure that we uh, leverage the playing field for everybody. Right. And one of the projects that I uh, had inclu included on the list was the Mount Vernon, Mount, State Route 92 Mount Vernon, because even though we're making progress with GDOT, they may come back and ask for additional. Um, analysis or what have you, and, and so I wanted to make sure that we were in a position to do that. So if that could be included, that would be helpful. Well, well, admittedly, that was acknowledged, and I talked to County Mister, and he thought just one, because I did mention both. So yeah. How do you want to? But Miguel, I mean, GDOT could come back and ask for more information. But but in, in 30 to 60 days, in other words, can we get to the moment we can do it? I mean, he brought it up, I was willing to acquiesce. We, we sort of allowed you to sort of override your own staff. Well, I mean, if they're willing to, I mean, if they're asking for something, we need to get it to them quick. But we don't know yet. He wants to prepare us. So the question yeah. is, do we? So this, I don't think it would be much. It yeah. shouldn't. It shouldn't be much. But we've it, already done all the work. But it yeah. would be timely to move the process. Yes, forward. it would. Yeah. yeah, because we still have to share with them. Yeah, I would say we have to share with them. So we have to share with them. I advocate for it. I got it. Okay. We got it. Okay. All right, so I'd like to um, call for a motion to make a recommendation to accept the recommendation from the Hershey Committee, which will give the Board of Commissioners um, a timely re um, response for the following projects. Right, Mark, make sure we get them right. Mount Vernon Road Signal at Fairville Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Riverside Signal <coughs> at Fairville Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard, northbound turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Chapel Hill Road. It was four intersections project. Yep, four intersection project. Okay, that helps with the name. And then the um, Maxim Road, um, on Highway, um, Thornton Road, Highway 6 intersection. Did I get that out? Actually, that, it's the sidewalk project, the Maxim Road sidewalk. Okay. But it's tied to that, that Intersection rebuild, right? Uh, no, this this would be a county project to to connect the sidewalks from 
that project yeah. to cut. But the project hasn't been built yet. So right, but we need to design, get this design underway. This, this design. Yes, yes, yes it's just design. Just that. That's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Sir. Okay. Any more discussion? Are we clear? Parts and lines are clear. Now, with this second, uh, I want to make sure that we amend this to acknowledge that this contract for these projects is only a one time task order. One time task order. Mm -hmm. um, um, no one year and no re up. And that the Board of Commissions, will, this committee will come back and do a refresh of the list. Could I? Yeah, could I offer some comment? Uh, there is a. Uh, an item coming up on, on the agenda or an update that may require us to revisit this, and that is the Lee Road widening project. What, what uh, GDOT is now asking, the, the, the project was initially intended to be bid out by GDOT and the construction administered by GDOT. They, uh, within the last week, have come back to the county and said they would like the county to do that for a number of reasons. One being they don't have the staff. Two being they don't have the money, at least not in their budget, to do it. And so um, there is a possibility that, and again, the decision hasn't been fully made. It, it is up for discussion here, and then I will engage the state in further discussion. But which way we go um, may play into this recommendation, because if the county were to undertake letting the project, if that were an option, uh, then we would be responsible for the inspections on that project and the testing. And I, and I appreciate that, Lee Rowan. It's very, very important to all three commission districts. Um, you know, we just finished the resurfacing. And um, again, one more time, the citizens expressed uh, this past weekend that there, you know, there's a, a, a satisfaction with the immediacy <coughs> of our effort. Uh, we also um, see, um, mentioned in yesterday's work session, and this was a, a, a task, that we need to understand the impact of the Lee Rowan project against our overall cash flow. Right? So we, we, I'm, not, I'm, I'm cautioning just, just, and, and again, the fact that the state was supposed to be responsible for those two tasks items. Now, there's a, okay, we need you to do it. Well, okay, we need to think about that. But that doesn't force my decision making then. That gives me reason to pause. Right? Okay, so recast, like we have, the board commissioners are asked for a recast. So let, let's see how that project as is going to impact my cash flow. Behind that becomes your point, which is okay, and now you want to add that I got to pick up these other tasks that were never in this original. And now it's like, it's, so that gives us even more reason to sort of steady. Right? We, 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 the Board of Commissioners gave direction. We want to recasting mark of uh, um, the financials uh, for, you know, the legal. Mm -hmm. Start there. And then um, there, there's no reason to even engage the state yet. Like, that's a big decision. They don't have the money and they don't have the staff, and so you're gonna drop this on us when we're already putting up like that's a big that's nothing. We're gonna make a decision on in yeah. two months. Uh, and Commissioner, if, if I may add, what essentially what they've indicated is they're posing this question to the county. Obviously, you have to make the decision, but if they they're indicating <coughs> if they are to be the letting agency yeah. and manage the project. And what's going to happen is when the bids come in, they will ask for making sure that they can cover the bid amount, yeah. the county can cover the amount, and then they will ask for the inspection funding for them to go out and get a consultant mm -hmm. to inspect the project mm -hmm. and to do the testing. So essentially, the way they're couching this is if you manage it going forward, then you deal with things as they come up. But if not, at the time that the project is bid, we will ask for the entire amount of all of these elements. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I think we need to talk about this offline. It just seems 
where's this push coming from? It's just like, okay, within the past week. Mm -hmm. that, that, it just seems, first things first, um, it, this wasn't brought up during our board commission meeting just then, right? So it's only been, what, a day? Um, that would have been material. But the direction was we were concerned about cash flow and timing. I don't want this project to push. It, 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 this would be, I'm, by my, I'm not comfortable in letting this accelerate beyond what it is. It, it can't be that thing that pushes not only what we're doing here, but also that swaths is like, you know what I mean? It, 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 it'll, it'll destabilize, and I don't have enough, like, okay, there's, there's this person, well, the state is stable. Well, well, wait a minute now. I, it, it has to align, it has to be stable, and it can't be a shotgun to try to justify doing these other contract awards. Like, no, then don't swing at it. Like, no. I, I, that move right there was like, no. That, that don't even feel right. It's like, really? It, 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 didn't, it didn't feel right. And so I, I would say, I can't call that um, question to a man to include that part right there. I think that's something that um, the Board of Commissioners as a whole gave direction to um, Department of Transportation, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, and your staff, mm -hmm. to get the numbers right and, and come back to tell me what that impact is. Because until we got our handle on that and assurance, all this doesn't, like you, you don't fast forward us into something that we really don't like because the numbers finish that first. Then perhaps the Board Commission can talk about this other part. But right now, it gave direction. Mm -hmm. okay. That was the direction yesterday. We'll get to the numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, steady. All right. That's what we've been mentioning all, you know, all, all the way through the entire process. But, we've been, we've been watching yeah. our squash, and we don't want to, want to spill it. Yeah. Because it's really, you use two of our terms, uh, Chairman of this commi uh, committee, that feel good, and he's uncomfortable. And those are the things that I use in the Rubbed off, so, yeah. okay, I, okay. So, so you, please, you if we could just slow it down, just a little bit. Right. And, then, and, and then if we could just renegotiate, why should we take the responsibility to leave this project? They should take it. And we'll mm -hmm. wait till they get some money. We'll do that. I won't. Yeah. To the point, it's not a force. I mean, it's like, do we know that? Well, we just don't have to take that question right now. I'm not. I'm not suggesting we're giving you an answer formally from this committee. It's like, okay, we're just not hearing about this. But that's not on the agenda right now. We're trying to. You're trying to amend something inside of a motion to say, I got to now factor in this lead vote. No, boy, I don't. That's not. That didn't make the cut. That that could have been proper. You know, last week when we met with the person committee. It can't be introduced right now. It's inadmissible, right? Not at this moment. So we're, we're trying to work with the context as far as you. Do we know that we're getting re roll back on track? Do we know that? But the Board of Commission wants to make sure that going to step four from fifth year, that we can handle that. That was, the, that was, that's the focus right now. I get the state is now introducing something, but it's like, okay, give me a minute to think about it. But then, I mean, I, in the middle of this decision, I got to factor that in. And so that, yeah, so. All right, so we got a motion and a second by the county administrator. Any more discussion? All in favor of the recommendation, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, you get that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jessica. Anything else? That it? Uh, no. You know, there's, there's we got two more. How much time, Madam Chair? I know you have. We, we're okay. Yeah. I'm just checking our time. We have. Okay. <laughs> we got a special call. Then we'll go. Okay. But we'll, we'll, I'll try to do this relatively quickly. Okay. The Maxim Road project, uh, just an update on that, we're still waiting on the state to provide a funding agreement. Yeah. Uh, they've been promising one um, for the last several weeks. Okay. One of the reasons they indicated that the delay um, has cost them more is you might recall at the last update that I provided on this, um, I indicated that with the bid results um, that I have to submit to GDA, I also submitted a request for additional federal funding. Mm -hmm. They came back and they indicated, unfortunately, there was no additional funding available. Right, right. now, they're indicating that there could possibly be some additional funding. And so if they can secure that, the funding agreement that they send us will uh, incorporate that additional federal funding. That's good news. Right? Correct. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. 
On the Whitestone Culvert uh, project, we're still working through the uh, design uh, considerations or the construction considerations. We anticipate a notice to proceed on that project uh, in the next couple of weeks. Stuart Mill and Yancey project is essentially complete, but not the, the uh, punch list items. And then the Highway 5 dual left turn lanes at Douglas Boulevard, southbound dual left turn lanes. That project is under construction. Um, things are going relatively well. They have come back and asked for some clarification from our design consultant, and we've provided the information, and so the project is moving forward again. Uh, so, so that's project ongoing project updates, or at least uh, in process. Just a quick, quick question. Yes. Yes, I still on the answer. I noticed that the project is, is complete, but again, the, the landscaping and the topography in the area needs to be cut. But I look like I see some little borders with little stilts up through there, so I'm just wondering what are the plans for the mowing? Contractors are going to clean that area up. That, yeah, eventually, uh, the, uh, the silt fence that was installed. Yes, it looks like a black fence. Yes, that uh, will be removed okay. as part of the you know, final cleanup in the area. Um, but they have to they have to wait until the ground stabilizes uh, substantially the grass stabilizes and then they can move. And then some more rely on the contract and do it in house, which one? Probably initially in house but okay. because of the ongoing contract. But once uh, once the contractor is all out of there, then it might be part of the contractor. All right, uh, yeah. the next item, Shadow Richie Hill's project discussion on, on project funding. We had this a bit of discussion regarding this at the last meeting, and I've had a follow-up meeting with the design consultant, and what they, uh, one option that, that they uh, suggested we could consider is we uh, are doing the overall, it's 11 miles of design, 11 miles of environmental assessment, and then the project is going to be split into three different phases for construction because of the funding and logistics. Yep. What they're suggesting is that part of the change order that they submitted is related to work for the overall environmental mm -hmm. component and the concept plan. What they're suggesting is if the county would consider reallocating some of the funding that was going to go to, say, phase three design and moving that process forward. And then we essentially would be reallocating the funds to, to keep the project moving forward, knowing that at some point we will have to revisit it as it relates to the design for phase three. So it's going to be more on the front end, and yet we got to make up for it on the back end? Mm -hmm. Did I just hear that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, because we're stuck right now. If I mean, they could proceed with phase three now, but then we've got a gap in the middle. The, the gap is the issue in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it's contiguous with other counties, right? Is it changing? Is it like 11 miles for us? Or the the 11, 11 miles, miles for us. This is strictly in the out. county, but, but they are designing the room project that eventually is going to ours. So you're connecting Bounty Waters for Sweetwater State Park, and that's that right. where this 11 miles that's is? Correct. Okay. Again, one more time. Worry. What's the cost? What's the cost? Um, it's about two hundred forty thousand uh, additional for <coughs> surveying uh, because of shifting the route. <coughs> initially, was going to go along the river. Yep. And so, right of way acquisition was limited. It was mostly park area and a few properties here and there. When we moved it to go up Rock House Road, then it's going to incur all of those properties fronting on Rock House. They're going to have to survey, and there's going to be property acquisition along all of this property. So it went from perhaps a dozen properties to 40 some. It's just a design. We're just in the design phase, right? We're in design. We're in design now. We're actually doing the environmental work right. and the concept development, and then we so. That requires that the design be done up to about a 30% of the alignment. 30% incorporate, yeah. 
And then, once you get approval for that, then you get into the rest of the design for each phase. You see, where's, so here's the question. Where's that source of funds coming from? Federal funds is 1.6 million, if I remember. Mm -hmm. We have that money? Yes. So we currently have it. What we're asking for is to shift it from phase three. We initially asked a couple of meetings ago for additional funds for the 240000 Right, that's what we were going to go so to. What so what we were saying was look, we could take it from the end of the project, go ahead and finish what we're working on now, and get as far as we can go. And then at the end, technically right now, we're 240000 up short on phase three. I thought we already did that. So now we need to add more to what we just amended? No, no we didn't amend it. We didn't amend it. Yet. Okay. No, we were told to stop. We're not going to amend the 240. So we're back asking for the same 240. So well, in a different way. In a different, different way, way, yes. In a different way. It, to, to keep, in order to keep the project moving, mm -hmm. uh, it would be shifting the existing allocation, not new money. Yes, no new money. No more money from the Board of Commissioners. Correct. At this, this, at this, this time. At this time. At this time. At this time. But ever hold not, I, look, this, we, there's one thing where you have vested interests where, okay, I got I to gotta keep it, you know, it's like things with vested. You got to keep, I, I'm already vested, I got to keep a look, I got to keep this going. I don't want it to die. Mm -hmm. So the, the premise was, okay, keep that going, but we can't get any right now. It's steady. Mm -hmm. So, this, if we did this 240 now, that y'all saying move this forward, there's no, okay, now we got to go do this like guys. You, it, it all can't hit like that. I'm trying to message to you. I, I, I don't see a way forward. This is, y'all, we're just moving shells. It's like, no, that, the resources ain't coming in like that. It's coming out of the capital transportation fund, which is, I think, that's the source, or federal money or federal match. We, we haven't refreshed that yet. Right, so you're taking money out that's going to obligate the general fund, like follow the flow. And I'm like, I'm not obligating myself to that. I, I just can't commit, but I'm, I'm okay if the full board wants to consider. Well, I, 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 let me just, maybe, maybe I wasn't clear, but um, the level of commitment that you would have going forward is the same you have now. There is no change in that because essentially, I get you, it, you moved it forward, but what, you're, what I'm hearing, I'm, I need the acknowledgement says, okay, but you need more today. Move this money up. No, I don't need own. more today, I will need more later. Right. Their comment was, if we move this money, there won't be anything in the third one, we'd have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to deal with that. If you accelerate the use of a phase three up now, that means there's an empty hole here. How will you fulfill that right there? We don't know. It's right. the same predicament we're in now. It's just at the end of the project instead of the, in the middle of the project. If, no, is there a deadline on this? Yeah, and we did talk about it, but again, one more time, it's we, we're still we, we got to get through our we got to get through the budget process. We got to get through that capital check. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, I, uh, and I have a little heartburn about the number, number of parcels that you have to, you know, to actually have to move the impact that you said versus 15, not 40. Mm -hmm. uh, that's huge. It, it is. Is it, it a workaround, or is it, do you have anything else, an alternative plan, uh, because it's not easy to take some pieces? Well, what, you know, that it, you know, one, one of the reasons for the change in alignment was the park was not comfortable, but there are too many issues, but the park was not comfortable with the original one. They, they were not on board with it. It was, the alignment, my understanding is it was initially set by the PATH Foundation in conjunction with, uh, with the county, and it, the topography was just not doable. It was too steep. When they started laying it out, they realized that was not going to work, and so We've been engaged with the park at meetings, updating them, and they said, no, that alignment's not going to work, but uh, this alignment going down, coming uh, up Rock House Road, and because it hits the park at the end of Rock House Road, they are in favor of that. They're okay with that one. But you have to get to that location through Rock House Road, and that's where all of this property is coming to play. 
No action. No action. Right. Okay. Right. All right. All right. No action. One more time to choose for now. But keep it. Keep it on the list. But no action today. Okay. All right. Keep moving. All right. And, and the last item is uh, uh, a discussion on the uh, no truck routes. We we had uh, discussed and approved moving to to the board through a public hearing. Uh, I think it was uh, Tyree Road initially, and at the meeting, the board meeting, we added Liberty. Liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what I would like to have the board, uh, the committee consider, is adding Gruber Slate Road. <coughs> and Gruber Slate Road is right near the access to um, uh, to the fire station there, mm -hmm. uh, near. Um, I do have a, a map here. We haven't advertised yet. No, we have not advertised that. We could, we could add it to the public okay. hearing. Gotcha. <clears throat> and the idea is to, to make sure that um, that commercial traffic and the truck traffic is not uh, it is not uh, using those residential roads in that area. Mm -hmm. Who knows that? <clears throat> So it, if if that's if that's uh, the consensus of the committee, uh, we would add it to the list and, and have Tyree Road, Liberty Road, and River Road. I thought you had one more to that first list. Mm -hmm. East Carroll. Yeah, East Carroll. I'm sorry. Th there is a section of East Carroll that's already uh, okay. on the docket to be done nice. because because Tyree goes into a section of East Carroll and, and then it comes out as Tyree on the other side. Of so we have town administrator, if you concur, make the motion for yes. I'll make the motion we add Groover's Lake, Groover's Lake Road to the advertisement that is upcoming. Second. So, for no trucks. Okay. I think there's a second. We've got motion. I said so many. Okay, so we got a second. All right, so we'll get a second. Any discussion? Any clarity? All right, we've got a motion of second, no further discussion. All in favor of making this recommendation to the full board to add an advertising, say aye. Aye. Be um, opposed. Motion carries unanimously. And that fulfills the agenda there. All right, well done, guys. I know we, this, this is good. Good one, full, rich. Let this meeting stand adjourned.